Spies of the Security Service of Ukraine entered the command post of the elite 4th Tank Division of the Russian Armed Forces in Narofomansk, Moscow region. The images were shared on Telegram channels. According to information, the agents captured the exact coordinates of the command post, the list of personnel, the technical plan of the building and other important information. It was noted that this division participated in the attack on Kharkiv in 2022. After the defeat around Kharkiv, the command post was placed in Narofomansk. Putin unexpectedly fell into a trap that he wanted to avoid at all costs. He wanted the West to find itself in the place of the Soviet Union in the 1980s when America imposed a new round of the arms race. Then the USSR could not cope economically and the United States avoided the race, seeing how the Soviet state could not cope. In today's war with Ukraine, Russia's economic model is holding up for the time being so the Kremlin is really interested in a truce, realizing that it will not be able to outlast the West. This opinion was expressed by Russian opposition political strategist Stanislav Belkovsky during a conversation with Mark Figin. It is clear to the Kremlin, and Putin is not even going to deny it, that the West's economic reserves are immeasurably greater, which is why Russia is interested in a speedy peace. The analyst noted, the Russian Federation believes that the West does not want a truce but, on the contrary, intends to drag things out in every possible way, weakening the enemy, which is why Russia can conclude that the best path to peace is escalation. Militarization is economically disadvantageous for the West, but the combined forces of the US and Europe still have a greater margin of safety. Belkovsky emphasized, and when Western voters understand that a direct military clash with the Russian Federation is a reality and not a propaganda utopia, they will immediately demand that their rulers make peace with Russia on terms more or less acceptable to the Kremlin. Thus, according to the analyst, objectively, the preconditions for peace negotiations exist despite the fact that both sides completely deny them, and each insists on its own. Ukraine on reaching the 1991 borders and the Russian Federation on fulfilling Putin's conditions announced in June 2024. Ukraine's refusal to join NATO, the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from the territories of the Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. On the night of September the 18th, an ammunition depot was attacked in the Russian settlement of Toropets in the Tver region, and this attack is one of those that affect the ability of the Russian occupation forces to carry out massive shelling of Ukraine, noted Ukrainian aviation expert Anatoly Krapchinsky. There is a weapons depot next to every Russian airfield, but none is as important as this depot in the Tver region, he emphasized in a comment to Liganet. According to the expert, the attacked warehouse was one of the largest Russian warehouses closest to the territory of Ukraine. This large warehouse is a hub from which products were distributed to small warehouses like those we previously destroyed in the occupied territories of Ukraine. Krapchinsky added, now this warehouse has been destroyed. According to some information, detonations are also occurring in the underground storage facilities, the source said. At the same time, Krapchinsky noted that it is worth monitoring the situation in the Moscow region. Something similar could happen there too. There is Arsenal 53 outside Moscow. They produce aerial bombs and everything connected with them there. Therefore, we should expect the explosion of other warehouses, conventionally around Moscow. Because there is still something there that needs to be destroyed, Anatoly Krapchinsky summed up.
Another military expert, Ivan Kirichevsky, has said that the explosions on September the 18th in Russia's Tver region were unprecedented in world military history. There is no accurate data to analyze what exactly the Russians were storing in the warehouse in Tver. There are various reports about the types of ammunition stored there. The Center for Countering Disinformation mentioned that North Korean KN-23 ballistic missiles might have been present. Other sources, including the security services of Ukraine, suggested that Tochka-U missiles could have been stored there. While the Russians no longer produce these missiles, they are manufactured in North Korea. For now, it is best to wait until the initial excitement from such a powerful explosion subsides before analyzing all the data. Kirishchevsky explained on Espresso TV. According to the expert, the ammunition from the 107th Arsenal of Russia's main missile and artillery directorate is intended for the Russian troop group in the Kursk region. Perhaps there has never been an explosion like this in the history of the world's military. The explosions at the ammunition depot in the Tver region even caused an earthquake. If you analyze events from the First World War, the explosion at Kiev Fortress in 1918, and even during the Second World War, nothing like this happened with ammunition depots. Moreover, if we consider the importance of the 107th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate to the Russian military, there is no information suggesting that this particular depot was responsible for supplying the Russian forces operating in the Kursk region. This is why all of this ammunition could theoretically have been intended for use against our military. He emphasized,